Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to make a box that's not a box. There's going to be no miters, no masking tape method, no, all totally different than what you've seen. In fact, it's just going to be two bits of timber hinged together. Sounds easy, doesn't it? And it is easy, but it's one of the most elegant boxes you'll ever see. And here it is. Just two bits of timber hinged together. The top one is Sobrano and the bottom one is Celery Top Pine and the interior, the interior is made to hold your rings and, and your earrings. What an elegant box. That's all it is. And it comes out great, doesn't it? The, um, the colours are great, they, they come out great. So that's, that's the box we're going to make today. So follow along and have a go. This one's really easy to make. Okay guys, these, these are the timbers that we'll be using. This is the celery top pine. Look at the growth rings on that. It must grow very, very slowly, but it grows in Tasmania. And African Sobrano. This is zebra wood. It, it's a great match, isn't it? The box come out great. We're over to the plane now to play in one face and one long edge. We have one face and one edge of the celery top pine plane ready for the thicknesser and also the soprano done the same. One face, one edge ready for the thick, ready for the thicknesser. We'll keep the soprano as thick as we can. We'll plane the um, celery top pine down to about two inches, about 50 mil. Okay, it's all thickened up. We will now cut the celery top pine down to about 140. We won't do anything to the, to the soprano till after we've got this cut and chamfered at 45 degrees so we know how thick the soprano has to be. Okay, we've got the celery top pine planed to about 48mm if you come up, but 
and we'll cut it to about 280, 285 I think. Now we'll put a sizable 45 degree chamfer on the edge. And I'll do this on the saw, it's too big for a router cutter, so I'll do it on the saw, but it's going to be the same all the way around. But to turn the blade over to 45, we're going to change the zero tolerance plate to an old one that, that goes to 45. Okay, you see when I cut the long edges on the 45 that there's an off cut that's fell right between the blade and the, uh, and, the, and the saw bench. And I didn't chase it. Turn the saw off, wait till it completely stops, then you can take it out. When, when they're on an angle, they can jam real, really easy. So just stop what you're doing, turn it off, wait, and then get it out. Okay. I also cut, cut the, uh, the ends, I had to cut them upside down to get the right angle. But it's just a matter of creeping up on them until you get them. Hey guys, time for a cup of tea and a story. Another story from my apprenticeship. I was about a third year apprentice. It was about 1968 I think, maybe 69. And uh, time, time for changing. A lot, a, lot of, a lot of firms were getting in a lot of new machinery and ours was, was the same and, and procedures were changing. So in, in the old days in the cabinet shop you used to put a bit of furniture together from start to finish. You'd get all the pieces, you'd assemble the desk or whatever you're making and, and it was yours. You, you actually wrote your name underneath it. It was yours. But things were changing. Now, nowadays uh, they put you on making drawer boxes, so that's all you did, you made drawer boxes. The other guy next year, he was making tops. The other guy next to him, he was doing modesty panels and, and ends. Times were changing, things were getting a little bit like a mass production shop. It was the same down, down in the uh, wood machining shop. They, they got in a, um, a brand new dovetail machine, automatic dovetail machine. The one where the, the cutter goes backwards and forwards in between the fingers you had to keep up because you had a, 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 a draw face in the bottom and a side on the top. You had to keep up because if you didn't it, the cutter would blow out either the, the base, either the bottom or the side. So, and there were the left hand and the right hand. And of course, when the boss came in, it, it had a slow, medium and fast speed. Of course, he put it on the fast speed. And you had to be like the Indian god Ganesh. You had to have about 18 arms to work this thing. They had air cramps. <laughs> you know, the, the fast speed lasted for about an hour and I, just, I, just, I couldn't give up. So I, I put it on medium. The foreman said, don't worry about it. But the boss was saying, yeah, we need to get more production in this place. We need to go faster, faster. And I was almost finished my apprenticeship and I thought to myself, this is it now. When I finish, I'm out of here. And that's how it was. So I was, I was glad I worked there in the beginning, but
But by the time I finished, times had changed too much and I was glad I was leaving. And that's the story for today. And we'll have, have a cup of tea. Okay guys, the, uh, the bottom block is finished. Now we can cut the Sobrano to fit uh, on top of the bevels. So that wide, by that wide. So just fit it to the top of the bevels and then we will hinge it. Okay, the, uh, the top is, is now cut to size, it fits perfectly on top of the bevels and now we will bevel, before we hinge we'll bevel the, uh, the top itself. Okay guys, we've just uh, just we added the, the Sobrano top with a 45 degree chamfer. I used a big um, 45 degree cutter with a three quarter shank. It's a lot bigger. It was a lot sharper too. And, it, and it done a really nice job of it. So now, we've basically got the box finished. The, the, um, we've got the, the shaping finished anyway. So the next trick is to hinge the top before we drill the holes. Look at that, that's going to come up great isn't it? <laughs> okay guys we're ready to hinge the top. For this top we'll be using the, these little 25mm butt hinges. I have, I, I have a jig that does my butt hinges. It's a double jig so you can't mark up where they are. You put them on one side and you put it on the other side and it has to line up but you're doing two at once. I'll be rattling them out with a trim router with an eighth inch cutter in it. So it's fairly straightforward. Once you once you got your jig made, it's it's pretty easy. Okay, I've, I've read it for the hinges in the, in the big bottom piece, a flat surface on a flat surface. So keep them up just a tad. Okay, they, now we're going to line the top up with the hinges. So it's just a matter of, of lining it up. And marking it on the end. Because we're using a, a double hinge, jig, because we're using a double hinge jig, once you line up one, the other one will be perfect. Hey guys, another thing that we have to do before we go too far is to stick the red material onto the three ply for the insert for the bottom because they need time to dry. And we just do that with a bit of Type 1 3. Okay guys, just lay it on. If you've got a bit of weight, it'd be good. But if you haven't, don't worry about it. 
Ooh, stick. Rub it in. Rub it down flat. Careful not to get any glue on the bloody surface like I do. But get your forcing bits out. It's time to mark out the holes for the trays to hold the jewelry. Okay, mark, mark them out in a sort of a random sort of pattern. Don't, don't be too symmetrical about them, but they, they look better. Here, I've got five. I've got two, two big ones, two small ones, and a small one in the center. That's enough, but they've got the hinges in the, on the end there. So we're going to go about 15 or 16 mil deep. So that's almost to the end of the, uh, the chamfer there. So just go basically to the end of the chamfer, almost to the end of the chamfer. Set your stop up. That's it. And now, now we're ready to start drilling. All the holes are drilled, and the only thing that we have to do now is to hinge the top. Okay, all done. The, the uh, lid is hinged, the holes are drilled. I haven't, I haven't put all the screws in the hinges yet, but they're, they're pretty bastard to get out sometimes. So I'll take them off and I'll polish it up, and then we can assemble it, and then we can put the, uh, the, tra the trays in, the, the round trays, which I'm going to be cutting on the laser. Come on, come on, good dinner. A good colour contrast. Look at that, very elegant. Okay, time to sand and polish now. As I said, I give my, my box of three coats of spray lacquer. Okay guys, the box is just about finished. I've polished it and I've re-hinged the lid. It came out great, didn't it? The only thing that I have to do now is to cut the red bases for the holes and I'll cut them on the laser. And I'll show, show you how to do that. But you don't, you don't need a laser to cut them. You, you can just cut them with, a, with a, a standing knife or sand them up. I've got to cut them with a laser, but I've got a laser. The box is completely finished now with the Tobrano lid and the Sari top pine base and the red interior. Come out great, didn't it? 
this would be a great little box for someone to make as a starter box. It's only two bits of timber hinged together and some holes drilled and some and some material put in the holes. That's it. I'll show, I'll show you another one on one of the boxes the same as this. This is the same box but with a wedge lid and a grey interior. I, I made this box is in my book so this came out great too. But they're both good boxes and they're so easy to make. So have a, have a go on. Okay, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like always, I'm going to give, give this Sobrano box to a uh, subscriber of mine. So, so leave a comment and I'll pick one out and spread the word. I'm only a new channel when I need all the subscribers that I can get. So I'm trying my best here. I'll, I'll, end, on, I'll end on that. Thank you.